I have never taught this in the embassy. I taught this at the Christian Chamber a few years ago. But I think it's time. We teach a lot about vision. We teach a lot about leadership. But we need to discuss the key to success for leadership is vision. And I'm going to talk about this, and I felt led to, after what I saw yesterday with the kids. Because you, your passion, those that their passion is for the youth, now you're starting to see what this looks like as a community empowering the youth. So that's a vision. That's a vision that Vaughn and Rose have, and you guys are joining together, and it completes your personal vision. I know what everybody's vision is, your age groups, and you know who your desire is to empower, and it all works. You see how it all works? And you come together as a team, that's powerful. Most ministries or organizations they have one hot dog is what I'm gonna call them big wig that's doing everything and they get all the power and they get all the accolades let me put it that way and so what I saw it's a team so Rose and Vaughn they were like yeah look what we did as them they were like look at we did as a community we came together we all had our own load and it was beautiful I heard reports man who was it who was it yesterday Man, Debbie's got a gift. That girl administrator, wow, what a gift. Who was saying that last night? Vaughn. And I'm like, yeah, that's been inside of her all this time. I've seen it. Now they're starting to see it and how powerful it is. And it's needed. You know, it's necessary. So all of us in our gifting, there's a weight to it. And you combine a dozen people, you know, just like Jesus did, that have giftings, the Holy Spirit, the kingdom, understand the mentality, you put them together, man, anything's possible. Anything's possible. That was nothing yesterday. That, remember we put our training wheels on? And this is how we roll? <laughs> you know? That's just 101 of what we're doing. So I was so proud of y'all. Yeah, we had glitches. We had, yeah, that's why it's training day. We're learning as we go, all of us together as a team, and we don't want the burden and the weight on one hot dog or two hot dogs is what I'm going to call y'all. But it's for everybody. So the leadership key for success is vision. Now, when I teach this today, I want all of you guys to think about your vision because everybody's come up with their purpose. They've announced what their purpose is. We've commissioned it. We've commissioned you in your purpose here. And most of you have come to me with your vision. So I already know where most of you are at, which is very important. If we're going somewhere, I need to know, I already have the vision that God's given me, we're all going, but then I need to know where you fit into it. So then I can see as God shows me stuff. So it's very exciting. So I want you to keep this in mind today. Now what is leadership? Now we're going to discuss God's view of leadership, not the Romans, not American's view, not capitalistic view of leadership, but God's view. It's the capacity to influence. Now, the world view on leadership is the capacity to manipulate. Mm -hmm. And they actually teach you how to manipulate people or to emote them. That means controlling by emotions. But in the kingdom, that's not how you, that's not how you effectively lead people that way. So what we're doing is leading people through influencing them, through inspiration, which is generated by a passion. That's why I want to know, number one, what's everybody's purpose? Because then I know your passion. So when I see you, man, I know what Xavier's passion is. I know his purpose. So I know right where he fits in for the big corporate vision. And in the meantime, he's fulfilling his personal vision. Did you come alive yesterday, Xavier? Vaughn, were you alive yesterday? Last night I saw Robert, I said, Robert, Yesterday was the most alive I've ever seen Vaughn. The most alive I've seen that man. And that just, I was like a, a mother hen. I don't know what else to call myself now. <laughs> I'm afraid to come up with any animal names. I don't know. <laughs> mother hen. Yes, <laughs> right. It's an inside joke for you guys. <laughs> 
And I was so proud of you guys, because you have a vision. I'm seeing it come forward. And I didn't have to manipulate you, force you, hag you to do it, because this is your passion. So it's an it, passion is you, you're, it's an internal fuel you have. So nobody has to externally motivate you, right? Does anyone have to externally motivate Veronica to do backflips, <laughs> to do her gymnastic moves, to dance? No, that's an internal passion. I just want to do flips. I just want to dance. So she's fueled by the passion. So that's where I'm getting with all of you guys. Janice, were you alive yesterday? Yeah. I mean, you're seeing your students. They could start seeing, man, what our teachers sharing with us is real. We get this. We understand this. And they start applying it. That's so much fun. It's motivated by a vision. That vision is a powerful world. Most people in their lifetime never have a vision. And that's why they are depressed. They don't feel alive. We were talking last night at dinner. We went and I said, Robert was sharing how, yeah, when, when you're in religion, they tell you, what were you saying? How the fire will fan out, your passion will die away in a little bit, and the people are meeting you. Yeah, you lose your first love. And I go, what? I, who says what? And Robert said people are, his friends, his family, people he's known for many years are saying, man, Robert, you're still fired up. Because he's found his passion, he has a vision, he knows where he's going. And that means Robert is alive because he's discovered himself. When you know your purpose, you've met yourself. And then that vision gives you, okay, what am I going to do with myself the rest of my life? And then you're alive. And nobody has to give you nuggets or motivate you externally. You know, you, know, you read those uh, self-help books. And you get motivated in here, oh, I'm going to do it, but then it dies out. That's when you find your vision, your purpose. That don't die out because it's you. It's who you are. You become it. Birth by a conviction which is produced by a purpose. Most of you that are dealing with the youth see the negative things our society is teaching them. You're convicted. Know there's a better way. That's your conviction. Or don't live how I lived. Don't make the same mistakes I lived. That's your conviction. That's your passion. That this makes you a leader right there. That sentence, you incorporate those, you become a leader, and people call you great. Most people look for greatness in a title. I want to be a commissioner, right? We talked about some of the commissioners. What are their motives for being a commissioner? Now, the commissioner that came yesterday, you could tell he just wanted um, the best for his community in Immokalee. And he's a farmer. So you can tell his motive for being a commissioner. It was genuine. And then you've met some of the other commissioners. They're there because of the title and the power. Now everybody's looking for power. There's nothing wrong with that. Because God promised you power. But those are illegitimate forms of power and you have to manipulate people to feel more powerful. That's not true leadership. That's witchcraft. Leadership is a process. All of you all are going through process. We've talked about a, a lot about that with character. It's a process. So the key to being a legitimate leader is vision. We're developing leaders in here. I consider every single person in here a leader. That's why you have to have a vision. Everybody has a vision. I expect that. Alex, I expect the vision from you. So what is vision? It's the source to leadership. It's the purpose for leadership. It's the energy. That's what gives you energy. Yeah, you were exhausted from yesterday, but Rose was like, man, it was a good day, but yeah, we were tired, but yeah, this is what we do. There's a difference between being exhausted and drained of everything or just being, yeah, I worked hard and I'm tired, but man, I feel alive. You see the difference in that? And then when you have the right team, you can really rock and roll. You won't have that weight. I used to, OK, 20 years at the hotel, I used to be the hot dog that did everything. Because nobody can do it the way I want it done, so I have to do it all myself. 
I had a nervous breakdown. I became ineffective because I was so tired and exhausted. How can I do 42 people's job myself? Impossible. But a lot of leaders never delegate responsibility because they want the power or the recognition, because they want the accolades. But how effective can you be? And then you're the only one that gets the glory. But now as a team, we all get the glory. We all feel fulfilled because you're operating your purpose. That's fun. Then you're not, l not looking forward to the next youth explosion. Now you're like, man, I can't wait. We're going to do this better. We know what to do now. And it's exciting. I know there's other people I need to invite. OK, and uh, vision is the momentum. And it's the complete end. Now I was talking to Matthew. I was fired up yesterday. I said, make sure you aren't stuck at your business managing everything. Management is the means. You got to have a leader. A leader always keeps his eyes on the horizon, always moving forward. If you're stuck managing, you can't ever see. Because you're bogged down with all the details, managing people, you're running from fire to fire. You can't see. A leader always keeps his eye on the horizon. That's why when, I'll let you know, when Rose called me this week and she goes, Trista, we want you to teach on vision. I go, oh, okay. And I got off the phone, I started thinking. I go, no, I'm not the one that's supposed to be teaching at all. But I didn't even tell her that. I'm like, no, this isn't my thing. This is the youth. You guys are the youth. This is your thing. And if I get bogged down trying to prepare for it when I have other things I'm doing, then I, keep my, I get my eyes off the horizon. So I just showed up to see the big picture. All right, God, what do you want me to see? And then off I go to work on my projects. So always keep your eyes on the horizon. Vaughn Rose, always keep it looking forward. And then delegate. Delegate. That's a key. A leader doesn't work a lot. They think a lot. So that's your job. Do the thinking. So I was yesterday hounding Matthew. Matthew, make sure you have time to think. Don't get bogged down. You go in at 5 a.m. and you work on your emails and you do this and you go from meeting to meeting to meeting. Make time. Make sure you have time to think. When's your thinking time? He did it yesterday while watching the Masters. <coughs> he was emailing. He goes, look what I did. And he showed me and he Googled and this is what I'm doing. I delegate it to Dustin. Hey, now. Okay. Good. You're doing it. But I'm always checking him because this is, this is how it works. That's how you grow. If you're busy managing, your business won't grow, or your vision won't grow if you're busy managing all the time. Make sure you have a good manager in place. I have a very good, Barry is my manager. I let him manage. All right. Vision is the meaning for leadership, the goal, the heart. There are a lot of leaders that have no vision. You guys seeing how important vision is? It's everything in leadership. Many leaders do not have vision. You are illegitimate if you don't have a vision. You cannot call yourself a leader. And you better not have anyone following you because you don't even know where you're going. And you're leading them nowhere to nothing. So that's why everybody in here has a vision. And you guys are starting to see how it develops as a community, grows, and how it incorporates your personal and corporate vision. It's a powerful thing. Let me tell you, most organizations can't do it this way. Because the hot dog wants all the power. They get greedy with it. But not with us. Vision is the heart. It's the measure of leadership. How are you moving progressively, progressively in the vision? Now I'm seeing progress with the youth and what you guys are doing. Now you're getting ideas. Now we're going forward. Now we're going to start doing this more. And that's how you refine it. You develop it. Vision is the inspiration, because without it, you lose influence. So because of what you guys are doing in our community with the youth, you naturally will get influence. But if you're just talking about influence and all the time and not doing anything about it, nobody would know anything. The commissioner, you're on his radar. That's important. The government knows what you're doing, and they will back you up and listen. With us praying on top of this and fasting, watch. You just watch. All the stuff you've tried to do in the flesh, shoot. 
Doors will fling open, but listen, we gotta stay in right standing. We gotta stay and watch our check our character. We gotta watch our integrity. We gotta watch how we treat people. All these little things God's watching. But if he can trust you, man, access, right? He'll open the windows of heaven, that means access. He'll give you everything you need. And the time will come, you won't need a nine to five job anymore. That's according to your faith, where you are. Can you handle that? <laughs> okay, vision is the birth of leadership. It is born when vision is captured. Leadership without vision is simply managing goals. Vision gives meaning and legitimacy to your leadership. Without it, you are illegitimate. So if you're around leaders or people who have no vision, they're illegitimate. They're leading you nowhere. So check. Check your leader's vision. You should be able to ask them, hey, what's the vision for where we're going? And if they, I don't know, I'd run. Vision pro provides direction. They're always going somewhere. Most leaders are busy but not effective. Working on projects all the time. They get bogged down. You can get bogged down that way. That's how I was a few years ago. I was like, oh, I'm working on this, I'm working on this. Now, I'm done with all that. I'm free from all that. I'm like, all right, I'm developing people. That's it. That's it for me. I'm done. None of these other little things. I get invited to go speak. No, I don't got time to go speak to your church. No, I'm busy developing people like Nehemiah with a wall. I don't got time for it. They're professional distractors. Listen, I know my vision. I know my mandate. I will give an account for it. So I'm going to sit here and do it. I wrote Pastor Miles an email. You know where to find me. I'll be sitting right here in Naples developing people, period. Where a lot of people in the trustees in Itawala are busy building their ministry. They want to be on TV. They want to be a TV celebrity. They want a big ministry. And they want to write their books and be, have their face mug on the cover of a book. Face mug. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> have their mug. I got that from Robert. Have your mug on the front of a book. Wow. Am I lying? Yeah. To them, that's the epitome of success. And I wrote Pastor Miles, I don't care about none of that. I was telling Robert, I was on TV for a year. They put me on TV for a year. That's how Mindy, Mindy's the only fruit of that one year television show that I'm aware of. They put me on TV free for a year. So I've been there, done that. I see the fruit of it. An amazing fruit. She's a beautiful fruit. <laughs> but that's it. One year. That's a lot of work. You got to look good on the camera. You got to sound good. You got to prepare. You have the camera angles. You got to edit. Editing cost me $16,000 just to edit. I was free on TV, but it cost me $16,000 to edit. Mindy cost me $16,000, but it was worth it. <laughs> and that's all good. So I look at that, and I'm studying the fruit of my energy. You follow me? I'm not going to waste my money my energy doing something just because that's what everybody does and that's what you're supposed to do. That's not how God works. He doesn't think like that. That's how we're created to think in religion, right? Get on TV and that's it, you've made it. Man, I see now I don't have time for that. If it happens one day, that's fine, but I don't care about it. I don't care about the book. You know, it's like, write a book, write a book, you gotta write a book. Okay, one day a book will be written I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't have time for that. It'll happen, I'm sure, because even Pastor Miles told me. But still, but to a lot of people, this is all they want to do in their life. i got to have a book. Why? What's your motive? You understand? You understand people's motives for writing a book? I'm an author. I'm a published author. And then they say, oh, I need to put a title on the front of my name. I need to be a doctor. So i got to be a doctor to have the title so people look at me I don't know, I don't even know what you call all this thinking. This is too much work in my brain to waste thinking, oh, I gotta have a title so people will, I don't know, what do they do when you have a title? Look up at you? It'd be impressed, hold on, impress you. That's what it's for, is to impress people, okay? Listen, 
When you know who you are, you don't waste time trying to impress nobody. You really don't. You can wear what you want to wear. You can ride your whatever you want to ride. It don't matter. You can be yourself when you're not trying to impress anybody. But if you're trying to impress people, then you have to be inauthentic. And then you got to get a title. And then you got to write a book because I want to impress me. And I want to impress everybody in my community. I'm going to be on TV. Who cares? First Corinthians, one of my favorite scriptures. I'll share this with you guys. Paul says, I'm not going to walk around on eggshells worrying about what small-minded people think about me when I already know what my large-minded master has said. That's good. Your only job is to impress God. What impresses God? Tell me. What are some things that impress God? Obedience. Yeah. Obedience? Obedience. What else? Diligence. Diligence? Diligence. Management. Faith. Management. Faith. Faith. That's the key word. You want to impress God? Have faith. Most people don't live like that. You know why? He's got to be like a child. Child don't try to impress anybody. They just want to do backflips. <laughs> Veronica does backflips. We say, Veronica, you're good. You're great. What a great gymnast she is. You see, we call her great. She's not trying to be great. She's just trying to have fun. That's all this is about. You find your passion, it's fun. But man, when you're inauthentic, listen, I was over at the, uh, my son's getting swimming lessons now. So we're in the pool. You know who's in the pool with them? They were training three scuba divers how to dive. I've been diving for 20 years. I was born here. I've dove here all my life. I'm done with it. I'm tired. I've done a lot of it. Do you know how heavy the weight is before you even get in the water with all the scuba gear? I can't even handle it anymore. Like, it's just too much for me. It's too much work. It takes a lot of work to do something you weren't called to do. We weren't born to breathe underwater. We can, but it's a lot of work. It costs a lot of money. You gotta get certified. You gotta go fill your tanks. You gotta go load up the boat. You gotta put all the stuff on. Then you gotta sweat in it because you have a cold suit, uh, a wet suit on. I mean, it's fun for the 20, 30 minutes you're down in there. It's a whole different world. It's fun. It's, Alex, you know, right? It's a lot of, it's fun. But man, imagine trying to do that your whole life wearing these 20, 30 pounds of extra weight that you weren't born to carry. It's exhausting. Who's got time for that? So that's why I don't care. I told Pastor Mom, I don't care about books, big ministry, because I look all around me and I see this is people's aspirations in life. Because they think, because of society's mindset, if you want to be great, you got to be on TV. You got to have a doctorate. You got to write your book. What else? What are the, some other things? You got to have the big house. What? Nice car. Nice car. Look at the ride. <laughs> you got to have your Sebring convertible. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm done. Woo. Okay, so most leaders are busy, not effective. Why? Because they're trying to find the power, the accolades, they want the glory. How do we give God glory? By doing what he's called us to do. That's it. So God was glorified yesterday in a mockery. That's powerful. All right. Vision and the visionary leader. Vision creates the leader. Think about this. Vision creates you, who you are, and then you create the vision. You make it happen. You become who you are because of your vision, and then you implement the vision. That's how simple life is right there. Most people never get to this point. You've got to find your purpose first, and then the reason why. That's your vision. And that creates you who you are. I saw Vaughn come alive yesterday. That's when he's a leader. Right there. That was his domain. He was running around and delegating. I'm doing this. He talked to the commissioner. That's his domain. I don't want to do what Vaughn's doing. I don't want to do what Rose is doing. I, 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 could, I don't even speak to the kids. That's not my domain. That's not my vision. That's not my purpose. 
the kids, you got to come down to relate to them where they're at. That's tough for me in my mind. I like the business community. Robert likes the hardhead religious community. He does. So we all know where we fit. That's why I don't have to compete with you, Rose. I don't have to compete with you, Vaughn. You guys got this. I don't even have to show up. This is your guys' vision. But it completes us as a community. And then what we're going to do, this is the prototype for the nations, what we're doing here in this room developing people and what you're doing with the youth. It's a prototype. Documented it all. That's blessed. The nations are going to come to you. How do you do this? Number one, you have the right attitude, the right mentality, the right spirit. That's key. First, unity in a community. Then it all flows from there. But most people can't even get that first ingredient because they're too busy competing. Right? That's what you guys were telling me, the crab in the bucket yesterday. I went home like, what's a crab? I don't understand. Why? Do That's just too much. Do you know what that means, Xavier? What? The crab's in the bucket. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. People wanting to bring other people down and watch them fail. Yeah. Well, who thinks like that? It's a lot of sick people think like that. Yeah, that's why nobody can get anything done. But there's no crabs and no buckets in here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> no crabbies. If you're crabby, leave. Wait, 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 wait. Right? Don't even show up. <laughs> Sit home, watch on video, and crab to yourself. <laughs> or your poor spouse. I feel bad for them. <laughs> okay. The leader possesses the vision. You see it. You write it down. You download it. It's already inside of you. The vision's already inside of you. Nobody can tell you what it is. I never tell any of you what your vision is. Never, ever once. I don't know. I don't know what your vision is. Only you know. It's trapped inside of you. Then once you possess it, it possesses you. It consumes your thoughts. Are you at the point where your vision consumes your thoughts? That's a vision, if it does. This is all I think about, is you guys. This is it. I come to work, I do my work at the hotel. When I'm not doing, this consumes my thoughts. Right, Robert? I'm always texting, emailing, talking to Robert. Robert, what are we doing? Hey, I see this now, let's do this. Hey, how do we do this? But it's everything in the context of the vision. You see, we're not wasting anybody's time by filling you up with programs, keeping you busy. We don't need to do that. We don't have an Easter play coming next Sunday, so if you come expecting an Easter play, maybe Robert will sing you a song. Maybe he'll do a split if he still can. Not a song, actually. I'm going to sing a song. I bet you do. I bet you do. I bet you do. Oh. Woo. Leadership without vision is simply managing. That's it. That's all you are as a manager. Managers maintain programs, but leaders generate the vision and give the managers work to do. You see that? It's very effective that way. And not anyone has the burden to toil. That's why last night I said, okay, guys, I see we should do this once a month. Is that too much for you? They said, no. I said, good. Because I don't want you to have the burden of the toilet. But this is what I see. And I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I'm not sure. And then you realize, yeah, we can do that. Good. Absolutely. So once a month, they're going to start rocking it out. The kids, this will give the kids something to do besides get babysat at the Boys and, Go Boys and Girls Club. Man, you have the DJ there every month. Wow, what? That's awesome. Once a month for the youth. That's it. To visionary leaders, vision is their reality. When you sent me the, the text the night before the event, you said so-and-so from Louisiana, Kentucky, wants to know how we're doing this so, they can, so we can know how to do this in Kentucky. And they're all excited. I said, I saw this a year ago. <laughs> yep. Now you're beginning to see. I saw this. At the last explosion, you guys, I said, oh, yeah, you guys got this. You guys got this. You get it, you refine it, you tweak it, you make it yours, 
you, the right mentality, the right people, and then we can teach others how to do it. And they need to come and watch. Look, this is what we do. Just like we do at the embassy. They come, you sit for 30 days. You come be in the middle of our community so you can capture the spirit of what we're doing. We can't take this over to Sweden. Robert went to Sweden for two weeks. How do you take the spirit of the community to another place with one person? That's tough. So in my report to Dr. Miles this week, they need to come sit here for 30 days and be in one of your homes. So get your homes ready. Xavier, get your home ready. Rose and Vaughn, get your home ready. I'm getting my home ready. Debbie is too. H.E. and Sean, get your home ready. Robert, get your air mattress ready. Because <laughs> they're coming. And we're praying for them. Okay? All right. To visionary leaders, vision is your reality. You do not focus on the present. Always focus on the future. Always keep your eyes on the horizon. You delegate, you manage where you are, but always keep your eyes on the horizon. Otherwise, you get stuck in a rut. Not me. Who who leads with vision is simply taking a walk. Wait, he who leads without vision is simply <laughs> taking a walk. Busy people with no direction in life. Watch it, because they're charismatic. They look a certain way, they sound a certain way. They talk the talk, they know how to walk the walk. But where's their fruit? That's what I want to know. What do, they, what do they have to show for their time and their energy? Activity with no meaning. It's very easy to be a busy body, busy body, right? A busy V. Is there meaning? Is it fulfilling your vision, your purpose? You guys stop it. <laughs> the abuse of human and material resources. You see a lot of people abusing human resources and people and their time and their money. Listen, I know Robert went to town last week on multi-level marketing. I put in my report to Dr. Miles, our community frowns upon multi-level marketing. And I said, I highly recommend no kingdom communities have multi-level marketing in it. Because that's how you use the people to benefit for yourself. Man. That should not be amongst kingdom people. <laughs> I made that very clear, a whole paragraph in my report. No, no, big no, 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 no. You're capitalizing on other people to benefit yourself. It's manipulation. It's witchcraft. Mm. Now, there are some, there are some very legitimate, ML, I'm not mar you know, hounding any, all of the MLLs, no. but listen. What are they called? MMMs. But not in a community. And especially if you're a leader or head in a community yeah. or an organization or a ministry. Yeah. That's abuse of human and material resources. So what's happening out there in the world? The blind is leading the blind into a ditch. And you know what happens in that ditch? You're still alive. It's like a cockroach on their back. And you're just, you're still alive. It's, you're going nowhere. But you're moving and you're just, I don't know what to do. That's how it is in the world. The blind leading the blind, like a bunch of cockroaches in a little ditch. That's what Jesus said the leadership of this world is. He said, it shall not be that with you. So a title doesn't mean people know where they are going. Just because you're the president, mm, just because you're the vice president, just because you're the doctor, just because you're the pastor, just because you're the manager. Don't be impressed by titles. Don't be impressed by titles. You guys know me. I'm like, I poo-poo on titles. Paul says, I count all of that as dung, poo, cow manure, all those things. He had more titles and accolades than anybody. He was the top of his class in, in uh, Gamil. I count all that as nothing. That's what I'm trying to get across. A visionary leader with a vision will keep you out of the ditch. That's important. No one wants to live in a ditch. Some of us can think of the places we've come from. We're like, ooh, that was a nasty ditch we were in. I'm glad to be out of that one. So the most important component of leadership is not power. That's why most people become a mayor or a president or go into politics, Congress. They want to become a CEO. They want to go to Wall Street. 
because of power. When you've got the kingdom, you have power. That's why you don't have to go running around looking for it anymore. Your search is over. I've got it. Now, seven years ago, if someone says, Trista, you need your doctor, I may have entertained that. Or Trista, you need to write a book, I may have entertained that. I don't know. Because you, you, human nature, you're looking for power because that's what you lost. So everyone's looking, how do I get power? I get it from money. I get it from positions, from titles. I get it from my business card. It says I'm somebody. All of you all are somebodies. You don't have to have a business card or, an, or a, a caller or something to prove you have power. The most important, of vi the most important component of leadership is what? Vision. vision. Having a vision. That's it. So test your leaders. Test them. Ask them. Where are we going? That's all. It gives legitimacy to power. Vision gives power the right to be used. What are you using this power for, this leadership position? Well, I'm taking everybody somewhere. I'm developing people. We're empowering the <laughs> youth. That gives you the legitimacy to have power. God will give you more power because your vision, he knows how you're going to use it. Power should be used for vision. Otherwise, where there's no vision, power will be destroyed. You, you guys know, in all of history, those that misused power eventually came to a downfall. You have Bernie Madoff. You have, uh, who else do we have in history? Hitler, crazy man with power. Uh, there's a lot of power, power trippers, is what I call them. Don't get caught up in that. So don't pursue power first. Pursue vision. I'm going to tell you guys something I have learned. In the kingdom... Everything is opposite to the way the world does it. Everything. What do you call that? Dichotomy? What's it called? Everything's opposite. Paradox. Come on, teachers. Paradox? Right. Thank you. Paradox. So everything in the kingdom is a paradox. He says, so the world will tell you if you want a nicer car, and you're riding a bike right now, and you want a nicer car, then you need to get another job, right? Or if you want to move to the nicer neighborhood, then you need to get another job or get a better job or make more money. That's how we're taught. That's how we're trained. Or I need to go and get my education. I need to get my piece of paper so I can get a better job. That's how we're trained. But in the kingdom, he says, if you seek this kingdom first, you understand how it operates, everything you need is added. He didn't say you have to work for it. He didn't say you have to pray for it. You better not be praying for stuff. You don't pray for stuff in the kingdom. That's not what faith is for. Faith is to move mountains. Mountains are things that get in the way of the vision. It could include your health. You have to be healthy. That's what faith is for. But we've made it, especially in the charismatic movement, about stuff. And Jesus said, if that's what you're praying for and that's your prayer list, then you're a pagan. That's what, they pay, that's what they pray for. So you can go to, a lot of you can go to your old churches. They're still praying for stuff. Do, do they have it yet? No. Because that's not what you're supposed to be praying for. Jesus was very clear. So if you need, I'm going to use an example. If you need a jet for the vision, because it's international, then guess what? God will give you the jet. You don't have to work and toil for it. It's that simple. It really is. So to me, the stuff we need for the vision, for KCI, ain't no big deal. It's developing the people that's the work. And I told that to Robert a few weeks ago. I said, the stuff we need ain't nothing. It's developing the people, making sure they operate with character, making sure they pass the test, making sure the right mentality, the right attitude, the spirit of what God wants to do, that's where the work lies. The stuff ain't nothing. The venue, the youth haven, the venues, the venues to come, the people you need, nothing. That's nothing. To God, that's nothing. But most people are praying and begging God for money for a new building. That's why we're, we don't do that. That's all they're asking for. When we go to different places, 
here's our building fund, we need a build. What? And it sits empty for six days a week? Are you kidding me? That's a waste of resources. All right, I won't get off on that stuff. La, 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 la. Vision legitimizes power. We talked about that. Don't pursue power first. So what is vision? The greatest God, gift God gave to humanity was not your eyesight, but vision. Sight is a function of your eyes. Vision is a function of the heart. When I drove to Mockley, I was driving through Mockley, and I show up at the venue, I'm looking with vision, not my eyesight, what I see. Yeah, we saw little glitches and problems, and you couldn't see it was dark in there, different things like that, whatever. That's no big deal. But we're looking at the bigger picture, right, Vaughn? Rose, the big picture. So you go in with vision to see what sight can't see. Eyes will show you what is, and that's why people are depressed. They'll show you the current state, the current situation, which can be very depressing. But vision shows you what could be. That's why you have to believe your future more than your present. You live in your future. Man, I was so excited I got home and I said, I can see what the next phase for the youth is. And I was like, H E, get everybody to get together. Let's go to lunch. I mean, dinner. I couldn't wait to talk about it. I was going to explode. Nobody was home. My husband and baby weren't home. I don't know who to talk to. You all were at the farmer's market. I got to talk to you guys. <laughs> I said, get everybody, make sure Rose and Bot are there. I'm so excited. Man, do this for the youth once a month. That's powerful. I'm so excited. You guys, this is going to be nuts. All right. The greatest enemy of vision is your sight. If you were to go by what you saw yesterday, you'd be like, man, this ain't working. We can't get the sound. We can't get the music. How can you have a youth event without any music? You know, it could be... Uh, a disaster, but it could implode you. You could be like, oh, it burst your bubble, right? I bet all of you almost had your bubbles burst yesterday. But you came together as a community, right, Xavier? So we walk by faith, not by sight. That's key. Most people can't do that. Pass the mic back to Xavier. So don't limit yourself to your eyes because they will never take you to the future. Close your eyes and see. I know we talk about this, but I want you guys to... Feel this in your DNA. You don't live by what you see. We don't have the mic yet. I was going to say that it was cool because. No, we do need to repeat the devil part on that mic. Okay, so. It needs to be said. Yesterday, you know, usually in a religious setting, you know, with things kind of going wrong and not starting the way we wanted to and anticipate it, usually in the past that I have seen, people would be praying against the devil. And it's the devil, and he's. They think he's on the soundboard. Yeah, I'm thinking. Messing with electronics. And you know what's funny is, I <laughs> that would always freak me out. I'm going, it's not the devil. It just means that the guy just never showed up. I mean, that's not the devil. And so, it was cool because it felt so refreshing that I'm going, man, this has got nothing to do with religion, and it's just got to do with character. Because I told my go, the guy never showed up. No, I'm going, wow, that dude has no character. Like he's not passionate about these kids. That's, that's all it is. No, you just don't care about these kids. Because if you did, you would have planned whatever it was that may have stopped you from coming and said, look, I got something to do in the morning. I got to show up because there's lives at stake here and they're young lives. Okay. So, and then at the end of it, we were all talking in the parking lot. I told Vaughn, you know what? I'm really proud of you guys because no one cried. No one made excuses. Nobody got mad and flared up and just started because one, the kids would have saw that. Yeah. But they didn't. What they saw was, okay, well, it's not working out. And so, but we made it work. We figured some things out. And it's, it's, that's what I saw. Is that it, it, it's a pilot. But what I liked about it was this was all of our first, at least for me, for with you guys, our first thing together. And we came together the right way. And that was so refreshing to me on the way home. I was so happy. I was like, man, this is it for me. Like, this is the group. This is the crew. This is it. This is what I've been looking for so long, the right people. Like, I don't you, care where you're at. God feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Seriously. Yeah. He's been waiting for 2,000 years. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking this yesterday as I was studying. Jesus did an amazing feat to get the Holy Spirit back in us, to get the kingdom. In 1,800 years, since all the apostles are gone and the kingdom message died out 1,800 years ago, how many people really got the kingdom? For real, for real. 
And that's what he said. Few will find this. He told us that. We're seeing that. And there's 7 billion on the planet right now. Lord have mercy. And Papa Miles is going all around the world trying to tell all these people. You were telling me, Sean and H.E., when he came to your church a few years ago, what percentage of people got it? And he was there for three days? What percentage of people got it? Yeah, point one, point zero one. Yeah, it's crazy. And I've been watching this seven, eight, or seven, six years. Yeah. Even the last thing he did in Texas after he spoke and everything, the very next person that got up to speak, everything was exactly the same mindset. I mean, right after he spoke. That's how it right is. After, all the like, time. Whoa! How could you say that? Didn't you hear anything? Mm -hmm. It's Mindy? amazing. That's how it is everywhere. But he goes and he just does his thing because that's what he's supposed to do. He's being obedient. It's just shocking. It is. <laughs> I know. I know it is. All right. Sight restricts your present. Vision releases you to the frontiers of the future. Always. Okay. Your last success, don't stay there. It can be detrimental to your vision. So all of a sudden, like Matthew, he's very successful right now. He's opening an office in Fort Myers and Marco. And I said, yesterday I go, Matthew, that ain't nothing. That's a blimp on the radar. What's the big deal about where are you going now? What's next? That's nothing. That's Southwest Florida, big deal. Your gift is bigger than this region. So I'm always pushing him. Where are you going next? Fort Myers, the offices haven't even opened yet. I've seen them open, they're done. People are working in there. What's next? This ain't nothing. So I got him thinking. That's what vision does. It releases you to the frontiers of the future. Never stay in the present with your eyesight. So don't stay there yesterday. Learn from it. But where are we going now? What do I see? I'm waiting for you guys to see. So you come up with your ideas. You guys do. Come up with your ideas. You implement them. You should be bringing stuff to the table. Uh, I heard Uni did amazing yesterday, too. Bring stuff to the table. Everybody brings stuff to the table. Sight captures the present. Vision captures the future. Never live in the present. You'll be depressed. No, it's not here. Sight deals with what is, vision what can be. All right, I'm going to pop around because we're going to finish up here. And I still have, oh my, I'm only halfway done. All right, guys, I'm sorry. We're going to have to finish up next week. Don't sell people your personality, for you are temporary. Don't let them depend on you. That's why I didn't have to show up yesterday. I said, hey, I'm not coming. And then I showed up. Because <laughs> I wanted to see. Not to see, but I wanted to see. You guys see that? So then you take ownership of it. You, this is your guys' vision. Vaughn and Rose, and, and the rest of us are going along for the ride. So always stay looking. Don't let them depend on you and your personality. Not the commissioners, not the principals. It's the vision. Remember, Vaughn was telling me yesterday, Trista, this ain't about us. This ain't about us. I, I know. <laughs> it's about the kids. He knows that. He was just reiterating. He's got it. Yeah. It's not about us. The vision, my vision, it's not about me. It's about y'all. I do this for y'all. So when the leader dies, the vision must live on. So you teach other people how to do what you're doing. And that's what I'm putting all in our report for Dr. Miles. I'm going to hand it to him this weekend what you guys are doing, what we're doing, so we can mass produce this. We're the prototype. The greatest gift a leader can give its followers is a vision. It's something that outlives you. Vision is never given to a group. It's always given to an individual, and the individual passes it on. It's always for the people. You guys are seeing that. The vision must be transferred. This is the most important job of a leader. The vision that God shows me isn't for Trista. And so I don't hoard it and make it mine and only I can do it. I, I'm trying to show you guys stuff because of what happened yesterday, because of the amazing youth empowerment. I transferred the vision. You guys came part of the community. You have your vision, which complements the big vision, and you run with it. That's why I don't have to show up yesterday. Because it's not about me. It's about what God wants to do for the kids. 
but he's been waiting for a group of people that can come and do it that don't want the credit. Because it's really about these amazing kids. It's all I've been hearing about in his split. <laughs> Are the amazing kids' talent. They were like, you know how much talent, I heard last night at the dinner, you know how much talent in Immokalee they were saying? Yeah. It's amazing. Untapped potential. You see that. It's true. I don't care what language you speak, what color your skin is, where you live, this potential thing is for real. That's why we can go anywhere in this nation, anywhere in this world, and teach the same principles we're doing because it works because everyone has that untapped principle, untapped potential. We all come from God. We all have a piece of the Spirit of God in us. That's potential, all power, omnipotent. He's got all of it. We have a piece of the power. So all these little kids running around, untapped power. Nobody's getting it out of them. Tomorrow's your job is to get it out of the kids. You're going to influence many kids. They're waiting on you to find your purpose, get your vision, and rock and roll. And we're all here to help you with it as a community. The kids are waiting on us. Are the teachers doing it? Nice. Sheila, are the teachers doing this in the schools? Are the commissioners trying to do this? You got one, the little farmer, nobody wants him. They want to shave off his beard. Yeah. What? <laughs> They're worried about his beard? What about his vision? What the heck? I hear these things like, what's wrong with these people? Here's a farmer that wants to make a difference, and he's qualified because of his vision, not because of his beard or how he looks or dreads or drives a convertible, whatever he wants to drive, a horse and buggy. You'll never live that down. Sean's like, I'm not telling nobody nothing about me no more. <laughs> the most important job of a leader is to transfer the vision. Y'all got it. Y'all are doing it. Rose and Bonner are like, this is the vision. Let's do this. Vision produces plans, programs, strategy for the people. This is what's happening. So last night I said, oh, we got to do this once a month. We got to just blow this out of the water once a month. And then Fort Myers is next. We'll train them how to do it in Fort Myers. You got your good buddy, Ron. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I can do this in Fort Myers. <laughs> Listen, man, I wish I could get to my other teaching. I have two teachings today, and I can't even get through the half one. Darn it. OK, <laughs> vision is more important than the visionary, and it determines the success of, this, of the organization. That's why people are looking for us for the prototype, because of the vision. Not because of Trista's personality. I'm not like Robert, not because of Robert's personality or Vaughn's. It's because of the vision. That's what determines the success of KCI, Southwest Florida Youth Empowerment. Your lions are us. Organization. <laughs> oh, what's the name of the organization? <laughs> Lions Unlimited. Lions Unlimited. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't remember. <laughs> That's why the organization will be successful because of your vision. But you have to live in that vision. You don't stay in the present. That's. That's pretty good. It's kind of a cool name. I think so too. I'm, yeah. Hey, maybe that's maybe I'm I'm prophesying to you. <laughs> I know. I'd join that one. <laughs> so visions must be shared for corporate ownership. Okay, I'm still repeating myself. It's hot in here. You turn the air up. <laughs> corporate ownership. This isn't Vaughn and Rose's show. This isn't Trista's show. Corporate ownership. Y'all own this. Those of you whose vision lines up with what we're doing. And if it's not for the youth, we're doing other stuff too. But right now, this is it. Because people are doers, not just thinkers. <laughs> Corporate ownership. So you will never succeed until the followers take ownership of the vision and make it their own. That's why I didn't need to go to Mongoli. And I said, I'm not even going. Because you guys own this. You guys got this. Now, the reason I'm so adamant about this and teaching this is because you will do the same thing for others. You won't have to tie a noose around their neck and hold them to them and, and 
manipulate them or nag them or, hmm, what's the word? Out of fear, out of intimidation, out of emotion. You can let them run with the vision. They have the right spirit. They may not have all the head knowledge. Listen, there's room for error. Ain't no big deal. Sound didn't work, whatever. You figured it out. Because you know why? You used your brain. In religion, you take your brain out, you put it on the shelf, and you leave it home, and you go out, and you're led by the spirit, and oh, the devil's attacking us, and oh my goodness, he's around the corner, and he's, he's hijacking the sound equipment. That's why we, don't, we use our brain. That's the most powerful organ that's developed in your entire body. It takes years to develop your brain. You will never succeed until the followers take ownership of the vision and make it their own. Otherwise, they will begin, they are just working for you. Does anyone here think they're working for me? No. No. Uh, uh, the guy that used to be the youth minister at Pastor Miles' ministry, when I was talking, he goes, oh, does Vaughn work for you? I go, no, no, no. No. No, we all come together as leaders on Sunday mornings. And we're, so Vaughn doesn't work for you? No. Vaughn, they're do, this is theirs. I said, this is theirs, their vision. They're running with it. But he could, how does this work? I'm trying to figure all this out. Otherwise, if they think they're working for you, the spirit brings jealousy, malice, hatred, deceit begins to emerge. That's what happened with Moses and Miriam. We don't want to go with Moses. He's dating the, the colored girl from Ethiopia. That was a problem. I did a whole report on that about interracial marriage. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Big deal. But some people had a problem with that. God didn't have a problem with that. Huh? I know that's right. It was a female, a man with a womb. Woman. It's all good. So what happened to Miriam? She's began to murmur, complain when there's crab, crabbies in the bucket thing. What happened to Miriam? Come on, students. Thank you. I said God gave her leprosy. So listen, if you're a crab in the bucket, be careful. If you're crabbing, I don't know what's going to happen to you. I'd watch your mouth. <coughs> that spirit comes in. We don't need this spirit at KCI. None of this competition. Are you leaving, Robert? No, I'm Oh, sorry. Malice, hatred, deceit. Robert talk, talks a lot about the spirit of unity and peace. That's what you saw yesterday, Xavier, you never seen before in a community. This is for real. So you must revision the organization. Keep bringing it back. It took me 15 years to get a vision for the hotel when I realized I better have one a few years ago. And I sat down, I need a vision for the hotel. I came up with it in two minutes. I go, man, why did it take me so long to do this? And I have it in our office on a wall, and everybody sees it in our staff meetings. I remind them of the vision. Why are we here? Not because Trista signs your paycheck. Why are we here? The guests pay you. If we lose the guests, you're not getting paid. So thank the guests for your paycheck. Because they look at me like I'm their source or wow. they're working for me. I said, what's the vision? Right here. To make the guests happy, have a, peace, a peaceful environment, a clean, orderly environment, and joy. You don't want to come in where everybody's dragging their feet and I got I to gotta mop this floor. Right? Wrong attitude. People see that when they walk into a hotel. Number one task of a leadership is vision sharing. It never stops. It's like sustaining a marriage. You have to keep, I love you, honey. Not only say it, just show it. You don't have to say it. In my house, you don't have to say it. Don't tell me anyone can say it. Just show me. That's it. So vision, you have to keep sharing the vision. That's why every day, actually this morning I didn't. It's the first time. I didn't show. We were too busy watching Robert do the splits, I think. So why are we here? What are we doing? Share it until they possess it. Do you guys possess the vision? You guys got this? Because you can see. That's when an organization becomes successful. And no one person gets the credit. When I talk to Papa, when I talk to people, look at what we're doing as a community. Are we showing pictures of us, what we're doing? Listen, 
One time I was standing there, we went to that big church in Miami, People's Church something, last year. And I was standing there, and some guy, a pastor that we all know, I won't say his name, he was showing Pastor Miles pictures on his iPad of his new church and of the chairs in the church. You should have seen my face. And I was looking at Papa, looking at the chairs, and I was like, this is what you have to show your mentor? Chairs and your new building? That's it? There were no people in the chairs. They're just the, it was just the chairs. <laughs> there was brand new chairs. And I'll never forget. So Pastor Miles is standing right there, and this guy here is showing him pictures. And I, I could see, he was showing, look at these chairs. They're blue and padded and nice chairs. Look how fancy these chairs are. And look at the stage and the lights on the stage. And I, I, I couldn't believe this. To me, this is nuts. Like, what, what planet are you on? And I'm looking at Pastor Miles to see if he's buying this. And he's so nice. Yeah. And he'll just, oh, that's so nice. Oh, those must be comfortable chairs. <laughs> oh, those lights look great. Oh, yes. Oh, that's nice. But Pastor Miles saw me making these faces. He knew. And I'm like, what? I couldn't believe this guy was showing pictures of his chairs. I was shocked. Uh, I'm still, uh, like, my mouth was on the ground. You're going to go up to Pastor Miles or anybody and show them your chairs and your, and your stage, my new stage with the lights? That's success to them. I can hold 500 people in my building. Yeah, but how many people were there? How many people show up on Sunday? And what are they doing? Are you developing them or are you just singing songs? Are you just entertaining them? Look how much we entertain people. What are you, the gladiator? Come on. Am I not entertained? Do, are you not entertained? Most churches are like that. Are you not, are we not entertaining? Look at the bass player. Look at our, the drumist. Da, 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 da. Okay, th that's fine. But a lot of people go for entertainment. That's why we don't entertain you here. That's the wrong motive. That's why people come and go, and that's okay. You know when Paul put advertising, did a commercial for us? He kept saying, Tristan, let me do a commercial for what you're doing. People need to know about it. And he handed me for like a year. This is my friend on CTN, the, the Christian network. Paul Lodato. And I'm like, Paul, no, this isn't for everybody. You don't understand. It's not church. We're developing leaders. You don't understand. It's not like that. And it's hard to explain what we're doing, isn't it? We still have problems. Uh -huh. We go to a hotel, <laughs> and we learn. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's tough. And that's okay, because we're so different. And I said, Paul, listen. And then finally, he called me last summer. Oh, I was four months pregnant, I remember. So it was 2011. And he called me. He says, my crew's down in Naples shooting for New Hope. And let him come to the back deck and just say something. So I said, okay, Paul, that's fine. So he put me on TV in advertisement. And that Sunday, we had like a dozen new people show up. I didn't know nobody. I'm like, where'd you guys come from? They said, we saw you on TV. I go, oh, that was the last time I ever saw them. They were expecting a church service. They were expecting to sing some songs. You take up the offering, you hear the pastor, and then you all go and you go to your buffet. That's what they expecting. <laughs> but this isn't that. That's why I don't want to. I don't want to advertise. I don't want to entertain because we're developing people. Not everybody wants to be developed. Not everybody wants to change. That's right. Change your mindset. What? I'm American. What do I need to change? <laughs> right? Shoot. Jesus said, the kingdom has come. Repent. Change your mindset because the kingdom's here. All of us have to change our mindset. I don't care what nation, what ethnic group you are. We all have to. What church you came from, what side of the train track you came from, doesn't matter. We all have to change our mindset. What gender? doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to stop. Oh, let me finish with this. This is good. What vision is not? It is not a human concoction of the future. Most of you know this stuff, but I want to remind you. Vision is born out of a passion from a revelation of a divine impact you encounter. You discover a strong desire to help humanity. So who benefits from your vision? If it's your family, it's over. That's not vision. What is that? Ambition. And that's what H.E. was trying to teach the kids yesterday, the difference between ambition and vision. 
because we have it confused. We live in a capitalistic society, and all we know is ambition. That's all we know. So Jesus understood that. He says, change your thinking, it's wrong, especially if you're in America, especially if you're in a capitalistic society, especially if you're in a democracy. We got a lot of changing to do in our thinking. So that's all we do. You can say, I go to a place on Sunday mornings at a hotel where we change our thinking. That's pretty much it. And you change your, your thinking, and you discover who you are, and then you're like, man, I'm somebody. And then you become yourself, and then you have your purpose, your vision, and then now you're rocking and rolling. Now this is real. It's exciting. Then you come alive. Okay, it's not personal, not private ambition. It's not goals or projects. The vision creates the projects. It's not a complicated list of programs. Most governments, they run on, not vision, but on programs. I'm gonna pave the roads. We're gonna do healthcare. Man, give us a vision bigger than us. Not a list of programs or goals. Because once your office is over in four years, this stops, right? They're gonna repeal Obamacare. I don't care what you say. They're all running their ads for it. Because once he's out of office, because that wasn't vision he shared us. That was a goal, that was a program. What's a vision? I want to save for America. I want the kids to be off drugs. You know every night on Dateline, on uh, uh, the news, heroin's a problem in America? In this, in this community. Of course in this community, especially. Especially. It's a problem. And then they want to think about legalizing marijuana? What's that called? What leads to heroin? Thank you. What, you wanna, what are we thinking? Heroin's a problem. All these lo young 16-year-old kids are in comas. They shoot this thing in them to jumpstart them. You know that it's an illegal shot that the parents can't have, but the paramedics have to get you out of the coma. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And the parents have it, and it's illegal. But hey, my son's addicted and he keeps dying on me. I gotta shoot him up with this. And one kid, it happened twice in one week, died in his home and his parents have that shot. It's illegal to have it, but they have it. And I, saw, I see a picture of these kids, they're 16. They're Christoph's age, hooked on heroin. And you wanna legalize marijuana in this nation? What is wrong with our thinking? It's off, no convictions. All right, let me go to the last thing and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you my last pictures. This is how I see the youth. What's the point of living if you can't feel alive? And then as I was looking for quotes, I came across this one. A lot, everything that kills me makes me feel alive. That's from a song, something, does anybody know where that's from? Because that was a lot on Google. It's a song. That's how they feel. They don't feel alive. So you guys are making kids feel alive. They have something to live for. Man, I, I can celebrate being a poet. Whereas maybe in her community or her house, that's not, that's not a gift, that's nothing, that's insignificant. But that made her feel alive yesterday. So the most powerful force on earth, besides your will, the will, your will is the most powerful force on earth, is a human soul on fire. Robert's on fire because he knows who he is. Xavier knows who he is. Rose, Vaughn, I know he knows who he is. I know who I am. Who can quench that fire? Because it's not an external fire somebody gave you. It's burning from the inside. You come alive. Your family tries to quench your fire all the time. No, -uh. I'm, I'm keeping my candle lit. <laughs> this is mine. I got to live with this, right? I want to feel alive. That's all the kids want. But right now, all they experience Everything that keeps them alive is what kills them. So I gotta get high. I gotta go back to the house of my neighbor's house and suck the Freon out of the air conditioner to feel alive. That's what they do. They eat bed bugs? No, they're, they're crushing bed bugs and cooking them in the pipes and smoking them to get high. Oh my gosh. So guys, we got a problem. <laughs> Getting high off bed bugs. Crushed, dead bed bugs. Okay, guys, we got a problem. Is the government helping solve our problem? What's the government solution for the kids? Make it illegal. Make it legal. 
drugs. Condoms, let's give you condoms. Let's make marijuana legal. They think that it's legal, they won't want to do it as much because they're intent to do it. Or yeah, do it psychological. Is that going to solve this problem? No. Who has the solutions for the youth? The kingdom. The kingdom. Who's representing the king in our community? Wait, not, not Naples Church of God? I came from that church, I can say that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, I think I proved my case today. And I, I wasn't even done. But we'll just leave it at that. I got a lot more to share. But I want you guys, now that you're walking out in your vision and you're seeing it, I want you to see even more. That's why I came back to vision and we shared that today. It's very important, especially after yesterday. These kids are waiting on you. They're waiting on you, if that's your passion. Not everybody, that's not my passion, is it the youth? But I'll support and I'll do whatever, and hey, you know, we need the finances for this, whatever, you know, we'll do, KCI will help however we can. Because that's on God's heart. That's on God's heart, period. I can share with you other things on God's heart, but I know that's a main thing right now. You think the pastors know what's on God's heart? What are they concerned with? The church, the building. Their overhead. overhead. They got to pay the mortgage. And we're going to build a bigger one. And I know because my husband's doing a big one on Immokalee. The youth building is going to be huge. My husband's doing that one. Yes, you're right. I know. And I know you know. So they got to get more people. How do you get more people in a church? Advertising for what? Entertain them. You emote them. You make them feel good. I'm just telling you it's a perpetual machine. That's all. Okay? I don't want to knock it too much because it's all we've ever known. We all came from that. So it's very hard when you have all this overhead and you've got to get people in a building to pay the overhead. So you've got to use tools to get them in. I've been seeing so much stuff on MLN. Uh, listen, and people on video, if you go to an organization that has multi-level marketing and the heads are using the people to benefit from it, it's demonic. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. I mean, they're selling gold bars, and this is our inheritance for our kids, the gold bars. Wait, tell me, students, what does God say your inheritance is? Before the foundations of the earth, the kingdom of God is your foundation. So don't, I mean, your inheritance. So don't be confused what your inheritance is. If you seek this kingdom, it's all going to be added, and then, yes, you're going to leave your kids an inheritance. That's of God. But you don't seek that inheritance. The inheritance is the kingdom. That's what you seek. Created for you before the foundations of the earth, not the gold. Gold wasn't created before the foundations of the earth. It's after. And you don't seek that. Listen, that gold bar will follow you and hunt you down. Don't worry about that gold bar. It don't matter. You guys know I really believe this, right? Yes. Okay, I'm not just saying this. I know it's real. And I know you're starting to see it because as you're walking in your vision, you're seeing the resources are added, the people are added. That's what true wealth is, resources and people, period. And that's what it takes to accomplish a vision. True wealth. And just to let you guys know, a DJ would have charged you $1,000 for the extra gig. That's what I would have charged. So understand that she's right. Like, you know, God literally supplies what you need to get the job done. Because I'm not a cheap DJ, but it's cool. And I kept thinking about last year when you came up to me at that fashion show. He goes, hey, man, you know, I, I'm looking for a DJ. What do you charge? I go, here, just call me, give me a letter. And now you get free. Right? And it's like, okay, it makes sense. And everything just started coming. I was like, wow, God, you are awesome. Like, you just like, prank, 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 prank. But he showed me, he goes, but your hearts have to be in the right place. Everybody's heart. And if they weren't, they couldn't do it for free. Everybody did everything for free and gave up their own resources and money in pockets Ooh, yesterday. It was well worth it. So worth it. Yes. So worth it. And then God will, God will give you a hundredfold. That is, the resources actually, aren't the yeah. issue. It wasn't even anything. It was, I mean, yeah. Resources are not an issue to God. No. 
They're not an issue. We've made it an issue, and we make them this big mountain, and we got to pray and move this mountain. No. Man, if people could only live by vision rather than what they see. Like, this is for real, for real, for real. And I know you guys are starting to see it. I'm excited because you guys are starting to see it and live it. It's too le too legit to quit. Hey, hey. I just yeah. wanted to add one thing about um, how you say untapped potential. Because I am a part of Bobby Markley. And I used to, when I became a teacher, then working with other teachers, I used to get not upset, but I could never admit my point of course when they're like, oh, those poor kids. I'm like, don't feel sorry for those kids. It means like they always want to give them something. But I feel like they don't really want something. What they want is like hard to discover who they are. That's really, I mean, I feel like yesterday, finally, we have resources where we align them to be who they supposed to be. Not like, okay, take me out to dinner, or show me what here's Naples look like. Or his, right. yeah, this is what they've been doing. Here, um, uh, Imakel is full of potentials. We have talented kids. But no one never seeing really their true talent because they always want to think they can give them this or that. That's not what they want. Listen, <laughs> I see yeah. if we do this right, God can use a mockery to change the nation. A mockery is a mockery is a, is a, is a environment that needs our swallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a third world country. It, exactly. yeah, I know. It That's is. why we're out there. Yeah. But honestly, think about it. Naples people got it made. They're set up for the most part. All right. They don't need God until they get cancer. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes no. Immokalee, they know they need help. And they don't want the handout, the Naples people come in handouts. They want to be developed yes. in their potential. Yeah. And, and then a lot of them, they go to school, they come back because they don't really know who they are. You know, I mean, they have a scholarship for, for, for football. They go, but they come right back because they're so used of people sometimes giving them. Yeah. And then when people stop giving yeah. them, they're like, what do I do? Yeah. You know, and I have, I mean, I wish I had these resources like a couple of years ago because I work with a few boys. And then a couple of them are in jail now because I didn't have, I'm trying, I was trying to reach out to them, but I didn't have that resources to tell them. You don't need somebody to give you all the time. And that's what most of the other nonprofits do. Yes. That's what they do. That's okay. It's all they know because they don't understand kingdom principles. All they see is religion or nonprofit. Those are the two alternatives that everyone's get. Nobody wants religion. And then the handouts, that how does that sustain you for a lifetime? What we're giving them sustains them for a lifetime. Teach them and a fish. And then cut them up, clean them. What did you say? Cook it and eat it, Robert? Is that what you said yesterday with the fish? All right. Does anyone have anything else? You know, last time I said birthday party, and I was talking to a drunk girl. S speaking to the mic. Last time I went to a birthday party, and then there was a drunk girl, and I was, she was like, so what do you do? I go, okay. She was like, do you go to church? I go, no. She goes, that's good. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't do the church thing. And then I just gave her a little snippet of the kingdom, just a little snippet. And her, light, her face just lit up. She goes, oh, my God, I wish everybody could be that way. I go, well, that's, that, was, that was the original plan. I go, but religion came in and went, beep, and threw a big old monkey wrench in all of it. And so I believe that God is raising up people that's going to take that back. I, I go, it's not going to happen right away, like fast, but it's happening. Yep. I go, and she was, I want to be in that class. I go, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> she did. She's like, I want to be there. I was like, okay, let's go somewhere. And, you know, but but it, it just, so people, people want the kingdom. They don't want religion. And I I, told, I go, trust me, religion doesn't work. It's horrible. It just, it burns. It just does so many bad things. They're going, she goes, I love this kingdom thing you were saying. And she's not, I mean, I don't know if she has, if she has any inclination of religion or God, but she, lo she loved it. She loved it. All right. So all of you, I mean, most of you have been here for a while. But even on the video camera, Debbie, that want to know more about the kingdom, the promise of the king, what we lost, what he brought us back is power. It's whatever man's looking for. When you understand human need is power, then you know how to reach them. But what kind of power is the world offering them? 
They're getting it in illegitimate ways that only last for so long. So when you understand this, you're done. And then you become yourself. And then you can empower others because you understand the untouch, untapped power potential inside of them. Pull it out. That's all we did yesterday. Pull out power. Untapped potential. It's powerful. The only thing religion gives you is the power of ignorance to keep you ignorant. That's the only power that religion has is to keep you ignorant. Because this is the only threat to the enemy. That's it. Nothing else. This is it. So... All right, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that went forth today. We thank you, Lord, for vision. We thank you, Father, for your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that we are a group of leaders with no ulterior motives, no fault intents, intentions. We thank you, Father, that your kingdom come to Immokalee, to Naples, to Fort Myers, to all of Southwest Florida. We thank you, Father, that you begin to give us the resources and tools to complete the vision that you've given us. We thank you, Father, that we are faithful in changing our mindset, renewing our mind every day as we begin to learn and understand how the benefits and the principles are of operating in your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for your community that you have brought together and for the bond of peace and unity that is amongst us. We thank you, Father, for the spirit that is here, our attitude. Lord, we thank you, Father, for an amazing day yesterday. And Lord, bless everybody that gave of themselves from yesterday. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you begin to show them even more when it comes to their vision. They begin to see. And, Lord, that you begin to release things. Open doors will open to fulfill the vision that you've called them to. We thank you, Father, for this. Lord, we thank you, Father, for little Joshua and Lily and Kristoff and the kids and Maverick and Veronica and Paula, Lord, that, you, that they begin to see what it is that they are called to do. We thank you, Father, for this. We thank you, Lord. We have a safe week. Angels go around about us. Protect us in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wanted to share. Yes. Stuff, but not on okay. Not on